Hi guys, welcome back. And today in this video, we are going to talk about how we can make use of the model context protocol to perform the three tier application testing. I mean, we can do the user interface testing or the UI testing of your browser application. And also we can do the API of your application. And also we can do the database of our application all with the power of MCP server without writing even a single line of code. We have already discussed about the similar kind of topic earlier in our Zero Automation YouTube channel. But this time we are going to talk about an MCP database server, which is also built from Zero Automation as well. So I'm going to show you all these details in this particular video. And we are going to do everything from the complete ground up this time. So this video is not going to be rushing like how I always do because I just wanted to show you the feature but this time I'm going to show you even more detail because I'm getting questions from the students asking Karthik how to set up everything from the complete ground up and that's why this video is all about. So you can see that this is the architecture that we are going to be uh, following in this particular video. As a user you are going to be asking the, uh, the questions like a natural language questions to the uh, MCP uh, server uh, which is going to be either a cloud desktop uh, or it can be configured in the github copilot or it can be uh, configured in the uh, cursor ide so you see that the logo is a bit black that's the reason why you can't really see that really but you can ask the questions in natural language in any of these platforms it can be even a client uh, a plugin for that matter so you can ask the question and these questions are going to be translated with the power of the configured model context protocol on the large language model, it is going to be routed to the uh, to the tools which is already uh, capable of handling those questions. For instance, if you're going to ask the question saying, "I want to perform uh, a user login operation uh, in this particular website," then Playwright MCP server is going to handle that. So Playwright MCP server is going to be invoked in there. And if you're going to be asking the question to do an API testing, and again, this Playwright MCP server is capable of doing the API testing as well. So the route is going to be taken to the MCP server, which is the Playwright MCP server, by this Cloud Anthropic, because the large language model knows that this tool can handle those operations. So it's going to be routed to this Playwright MCP server, and it's going to perform the API testing for you. And then if you know, ask the question saying, I want to also verify the uh, database uh, data, which is created for that particular user, then the question is going to be routed or the tool call which is going to be routed this time is going to be to the uh, to the MCP database server which can handle the databases like the PostgreSQL, uh, SQLite, MySQL as well as the SQL server. So all of these requests are going to go to these servers. So that is what is going to happen over here. And once it, everything is done, you are going to get a completely nice uh, report saying that these operations are completed and this is what is happened in the course of time for the requests that you have asked. That is what exactly what we are going to be discussing in this particular video. Well, as that said, the model context protocol as I've been talking about is the Playwright MCP server as well as the MCP database server. So you can see that in our Excel Automation's um, GitHub repository, we have got these two repos uh, repositories, which is the uh, MCP database server. And you can see that this is the MCP database server, which has all the details. You can also go through the documentation by clicking this particular link. And it is going to give you the details of how you can make use of the model context protocol database server. I've also covered a couple of videos about this uh, database server. So please go ahead and watch there. You have the details of all of these configurations for the SQLite, SQL Server, Postgres database, and also coming soon, the MySQL database. All of these informations are going to be in this particular page for you over here. And then we also have got the MCP Playwright uh, server, which is going to be handling you uh, the UI operation for that matter. So you can also do uh, see the documentation over here. So if you go and click this particular link, it's going to show you the details of how you can set up the MCP uh, Playwright MCP server. So you have got the details over here. So this is the setup operation for you, how you can do that in the uh, Cloud Anthropic Desktop or Cursor uh, IDE or GitHub Copilot. You can do all of these uh, using these configurations as you're seeing over here. Well, as that said, I'm going to do all these setup uh, for both the Cloud Desktop as well as for the uh, Cursor IDE. So for doing that, the first thing is I'm going to open the, uh, the Cloud uh, Desktop. That's going to open the Cloud Desktop for me over here. So if you have already not installed, please go ahead and install it. Uh, just it's going to be available for you to download uh, from the Cloud uh, website itself. So you can go ahead and download that. And over here, 
in the cloud desktop uh, you can see that i already have got the configurations of the uh, mcp tools like 39 tools these tools are from the plated mcp server as well as from the database server so if you go and click that you see that we have the alter table which is actually for the sql light that is what i have configured really and then we have got the append inside which is from the sql light and then clear cookies is from the playwright mcp server then create table uh, describe table drop table so all these are actually from the sql light uh, mcp server which is nothing but the mcp database server and then we have the rest of the tools is from the playwright mcp server uh, so this is the tools being configured and you can see the connection there is going to show you all the uh, connectivity details of the mcp server which has been configured but if you are going to be configuring everything from the scratch you have to actually go and select the cloud go to the settings and it's going to open this particular setting for you uh, and go to the developers and this is the place where you can see the configurations that is where you are going to uh, set up the configuration so if i select this uh, config and then if i'm going to open with the cursor um, ide these are the two settings which are going to be displayed for you over here but see that i have already configured these details but if you want to configure this information all you have to do is just head over to the documentation see that this is what i did i just copied this entire mcp server something like that and i have just pasted it over here uh, that's why it has got the playwright over here this is pretty much exactly the same command that i have copy pasted from this particular uh, page and for the mcp database server because i'm going to be working with the sql light database i'm just copying this entire things from here right these whole things i don't read really, these i don't need these two braces there i just know need these uh, much over here so i'm going to copy that i have pasted that over here but for the database i'm going to be working in one of the application which is already up and running for me which is this particular application it is built uh, in the c sharp .NET, and it is a web application uh, api application as well as uh, it has got the database so it's a three-tier application really and it, it uses a database which is nothing but this product db as you are seeing over here so that is what i have configured in this particular place as you can see right so once i have configured this the database can be connected and that's the reason why the uh, cloud desktop did not uh, gave any compliant and it is just running but if you don't have the product db in this particular uh, path then while the cloud desktop launches it is going to comply and saying it could not be able to connect to the particular database something like that it's going to throw you an exception uh, so that is what is really going to happen behind the scene for you so well we have everything in place like once we have all these configurations done all we have to do is just ask the question in natural language and your mcp servers are going to start performing those operations for you so i'm going to say uh, i wanted to uh, navigate uh, to the application uh, in url and i wanted to give the application so i need to first run the application uh, within my local machine so that's going to open the uh, browser uh, for the page this one and you see that i have got an api uh, of the application it has got the uh, swagger documentation and the schema of this particular api and it has also got the ui uh, over here so if i go select the product you see that i have got all these different products coming in like there are six uh, products over here uh, at least in the numbers but there are totally five products though but we are going to create a product all by the power of the mcp server so let's see how we can actually able to achieve that so i'm going to say go to this particular link so i want to navigate to the application uh, in the url this one i'm going to say in head full mode so this is this is is basically saying uh, for in the playwright that you want to launch the browser in the head full mode so that you see the browser uh, in, in in your eyes visually if not it's going to run in headless mode by default that's what something um, the playwright mcp server has to uh, has got the handle inside right uh, and i'm going to say i want to navigate to this particular uh, link in the in the head full mode uh, then i click the create url or we create link to create products and i'm gonna say uh, so once i go and click this create link it's gonna show me all the products i'm gonna say create products uh, with some realistic data so i'm not even telling what data that i wanted to enter but i'm saying just create some product with some realistic data so it knows the context of what it has to create 
And once it's going to be creating that, I'm going to say um, create some product with the realistic data and then verify the database has got the same data uh, created. So this time I'm asking to go and verify the database which has got the same data created. So now from the UI, I'm asking the MCP server uh, or the MCP database server to come in action to perform those operation. And I'm also gonna say, I also need to verify the API of the application uh, to see if the product we created does exist. Look at that. That is what something I'm gonna do. Uh, you can learn about the uh, product API specifications from the schema and I'm gonna give the schema so that the MCP server can understand uh, what URL that it needs to, uh, to action on. So I'm gonna give the schema as well. So this is the, the overall specification that I'm gonna give to the cloud desktop so that now cloud desktop can really answer those questions for me. So let's see how that really works. So I'm gonna go hit this and look at that. It's gonna tell that I will first help you navigate to the application. It tells me that I want to invoke the navigation operation. So it's gonna ask, uh, it's gonna start running the playwright navigate functionality. Look at that, it's gonna go in the this particular URL and the headless is false this time because I told to run in headful mode, right? So you see that the browser is gonna be invoked this time. Look at that, it navigated to this particular page. Uh, and then it's asking me that uh, I need to go click this product uh, link there. So look at that, now it's doing it. Uh, and it's getting all the details. It's just taking a screenshot because it couldn't able to click the create link there. So it has created, clicked the create button there. And now it is gonna uh, start entering the the operation for me there. Let's see what's gonna happen. There we go. So you see that it is creating the uh, the name of the product and then it is gonna enter the description of the product for me. So let's see if that is gonna be entered. There we go. And now it should enter the price, which is done as well. And it should uh, select the Freddy Pearls. Uh, let's see, what is it doing? It's selecting the product type. And it has entered the particular value, which is amazing. So now uh, you can see that the product has been created over here, the Ultra HD gaming uh, thing, which is great. And now it is going to uh, go and verify if the product uh, exists. So look at that. Now it is also verifying if the product does exist there or not uh, by clicking that particular product for, us, uh, for me there, which is amazing. And now it is creating a second product just in case to see if the product has been successfully created or not because last time uh, it couldn't be able to identify the actual control. So it is just doing that for me uh, just in case. Uh, which is amazing. And now it is gonna do a database check for me. So let's verify that our second product uh, does exist in the database. So it is gonna go and verify and to see if the data is there uh, in the database. Look at that, now it's invoking the uh, SQLite uh, MCP server. The database MCP server is gonna choose from the product database. And now it is running it, which is amazing. Let's see if it, it could be able to find that particular uh, product for me. And it has noticed that the product has been created, which is amazing, but it has also noticed that the product which is stored in the database looks like the value is zero in the database. So for some reason, it is not really, uh, con uh, is not really handling the decimal value. So what now behind the scene while this is happening, the MCP server is parallelly doing is, it is now creating a product with the the price of 199 without a decimal value, which is amazing, right? Now, now it's now just checking whether the 199 value is actually handled or not correctly, uh, whether the zero is not really saved there for me or not. So now you see that now it is doing a lot of permutations and combinations for me just in case so that it could able to uh, validate these details for me without any problem. So 
you see that now it has analyzed the APIs as well uh, behind the scene. Uh, and finally, it is also going to close the browser. So look at that. Now it has did a lot of different operation for me. So it has really did like three scenarios just for one request that I asked. But it is doing a lot of different uh, permutations and combination testing as well because it could able to identify that for some reason the decimal values are not handled. So it parallelly started executing the um, the one test without the uh, decimal value for the price, and then it could able to verify it. So you see that it has created three new products over here. And also uh, verified the database for all the created products that were stored in the database. And also identified the data type issue with the product uh, which has got the integer and doesn't store the decimal value. Uh, and then finally, the, once the issue has been identified, uh, it, uh, it knows that the affected first two products were entered the decimal value, this one and this one, and it was not really saved. But the third value, the whole number was stored correctly. This is amazing, right? We just asked one single query over here and it did three different tests for us without even a single hiccups, right? Which is amazing. So it is doing all of these different operations for me to ensure that our test is fully uh, functioning and it has tested everything uh, in a holistic manner. So this is how we can do the testing with the uh, cloud desktop. So now that we have got this entire idea, now I'm gonna switch my attention to the cursor IDE. Uh, and within the cursor IDE, if you go to the settings and if you go to um, the cursor setting, you can see that we have got an MCP there. I have configured the same exact servers that I just shown you in, in the cloud desktop. I just copy pasted uh, in the cursor uh, IDE as well. So if I just go and select this one, you see that it's gonna show you the MCP server. So it's pretty much exactly the same thing that you are seeing on the cloud desktop. I just copy paste it over here. Uh, and that is what is being configured and is currently showing you all the different tools uh, and uh, for the MCP Playwright as well as uh, the SQLite. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this entire command and if I run the exact same thing with the cursor IDE, it is going to do the exact same thing as well. Make sure that you choose the agent there in the drop down, which is by default these days. Uh, and look at that, it is going to run things. So it's going to start running the Playwright Navigate one more time. Uh, and then it is going to perform a click operation for the create. And then it is going to get the visible uh, HTML because it has to uh, perform the name, description, price, and product type filling. So this time, uh, it is getting these details for us over here because it needs to perform the operation. So uh, it is getting the entire HTML uh, structure before it could able to start performing the uh, data entry operation for me. Look at that. It's doing every single thing. Again, it's entering the decimal value there. It's going to fail. We know that. We have seen it uh, before. Uh, but let's see if that really works. So data entry is done, and now it is doing the SQL uh, server or SQL Lite database verification. And now it is doing an API testing verification. And finally, it has completed all the different operation. And this time, even now, it is telling us that the verified database, the product was found in the product table with the correct name description, but the price was stored as zero. So even this time, it has found that the product price is not storing correctly. So this proves the point that we could able to do all the three different operations, the API, database, and UI of our application testing with just the plain natural language. And we could able to do the entire testing without even a single hiccup. And it ended up doing three tests for us, as you can see over here, to, with multiple permutations and combination to see how the applications can really work if there is anything goes wrong. It can also troubleshoot and it also tells us that if with this particular scenario, if you go with this particular path, you could be able to achieve the success result. If something goes wrong, then it can also fail. So it can also give that result. This is the power, guys. This is the future of how we can do the testing of our application using the power of the MCP servers. So hope you really like how we have implemented these details and how we have um, made the futuristic way of testing the applications. This is the future, I guess. And I'm sure in near future, you are going to be using these kind of uh, operation. I think so. But, but let's see how it goes. But once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Catch you in the next one.